Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Advanced Refrigeration Podcast. Here with your host, Brett Wetzel, Kevin Compass, and we have a special, another special guest this week, Ryan Andrews from Emerson. How you doing, buddy? Not too bad. How are you? Good, man. What have you been working on? What? Ooh, uh, CO two has been taking a lot of my time, um, which is which has been good. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we're actually uh, in the in the process of kind of getting some testing equipment and kind of lab equipment uh in our ontario office out in uh, Brantford. Okay. so uh yeah that's that's been taking good of my time and looking to kind of come up with some more hands-on training in, in canada and for the the fall training season so i'm kind of between bouncing around doing that uh i manage the field services as well uh and for for the canada team and uh yeah it kind of keeps me busy so do you help design anything uh, as far as new new products? No, I don't do that. If, if anything, we have kind of like um, a committee where uh, we have it like once a month or every other month where various people from, in, from Emerson are on the call and kind of various topics are brought up. People throw in their two cents, um, opinions, comments, you know, pros and cons and uh, stuff kind of gets developed to there from there so that's um it's pretty cool to see actually very cool so ryan's going to be on here tonight to kind of show us through the e3 a little bit but you know kevin what's going on man oh just uh you put the screen back it was a lot better that way it, <laughs> no because my connection is like shit because i'm on my phone because the stupid computer's uh still booting up <laughs> It'll it'll be like done halfway through the podcast. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just doing more. I'm just doing more Dan Foss changeouts. I spent my uh, entire day yesterday loading programs from, you know, into three different controllers to make it, you know, functional on a new controller. Okay. So yeah, uh, I'm doing like two fifty nineteen year old two fifty five controllers to eight eighty eight and uh, yeah. Uh, I, I I can't wait for a change. <laughs> Is that better than finding out cases and changing fan motors? <laughs> I would I would rather change fan motors right now. <laughs> I guess it's going well. Yeah, it's just, uh, actually today went extremely well, and I'm ner I was nervous the entire time because I was just waiting to get fucked. Because like. <laughs> These are like direct switch out controllers, and we like copy the program. But I did the first one. And I'm like, only one sensor doesn't read. I'm like, mm, something's not right here. I, and then I did the next one, and I'm like, mm, this one works fine. There's no issues. I did the next one. I'm like, oh, this is not going to end good. <laughs> I, I'm like, I can I can already feel it. Something's going to go bad. It's like uh, I. I I did six controllers in like in, in like two hours of sw swapping them out. And I'm like, uh, like, I went through all the testing and I'm like, mm, I don't know what's going to happen, but something's going to happen. Wait a minute. You, you just, I want you to fucking remember this right now because you asked for this last week. Remember last week when we were recording with Andre, you're like, yeah, I'm just, I'm tired of what's going on. I just need, I need a disaster. I need, a, that's what I need. I need no, no, really no, no, that, that's not a disaster. That, that's, that's a me caused disaster. Like I don't need no, I don't need any, any me caused disasters. Like, <laughs> like it's that, that, that's just like, I'm sitting there like, mm, this is going too well. Something bad's going to happen. I, I don't have luck like this. I just so hope you get so many more of these. Oh, <laughs> like, and then I had to pull fucking Ethernet cables for everything because, you know, the electricians didn't show up. So it's just like, then I, I had to pull all the cables. So, yeah, I was covered in ceiling dust, ceiling tile dust all day. I was not very happy. It's a solid day. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking can't. Oh, my God. All right, I'm good. Composure. Um, yeah, so Ryan's going to take us through the, the E3 because um, I, I have one, but I, I don't have time to play with it as much as I would like to. So he's going to basically teach us some stuff. He's going to program a, like a, a basic rack, and we'll go from there, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It's um, I have an E3 behind me on, on my desk. I have um, I have oh. a 16-8 4 board underneath it. So I... 
I can have an actual input board, output board, and then an AO where I have some uh, actual well, simulated inputs, so I can get some values on it. But um, but yeah, the the I guess the program will go through kind of start a little basic, and uh, maybe down the road we can kind of add more to it, different features and third-party stuff, uh, CO2 stuff. We'll kind of throw some more content at it. For sure. Let's get started. All right. So in this case, um, I'm I'm connected to the E3. I just got it uh, on an IP address. Um, so you can also do this locally on the touchscreen uh, as well. But uh, doing it on a, you know, a mouse and keyboard is going to be a little quicker. Um, so main screen is kind of what you get. Um, after you do the initial installation of um, uh, setting up IP address and all that stuff, I just had to skip that because I needed to connect to it to get to this point. So by default, name of the E3, in my case, I'm just calling E3 demo, global data, we'll get to that later. Most of the terms you'll see as we kind of go through this is very comparable or people will recognize it from uh, E2 lingo. Um, at a quick glance, uh, bottom left is the name of the user that's logged in. That's what I have right now. Bottom right, uh, the model. Uh, I have an RXD. Uh, the E3 demo is just the name of the E3, and this is my current firmware, uh, which is not the latest firmware. Uh, time permitting, I'll, uh, I'll show how to do a quick firmware update on that. Um, do quick, I guess, overview of the models. Um, and for the E2s, let's say for the refrigeration side, we used to have a RX 300 and an RX 400. For the E3s, the equivalent of a 300 is an RX. The equivalent of a 400 is an RXE. And that same kind of model structure follows for BX and CX. There's also a SF, which is a small format model, uh, just mainly same hardware, but less applications. Uh, so if you, I don't know, if you have a C store or something and don't need a lot of applications, there's no reason to buy an RXE. It's be kind of add a lot of cost to the job if you don't really need it. But if you had, if you had a rack, like, like some of these smaller convenience stores, you know, large, large to the small convenience stores, like have a rack up there. So like you would still want, you wouldn't want. Yeah, you probably, uh, I'd, I'd probably, probably a CX or a CXE if you would have HVAC lighting and refrigeration um, being that's a uh, device that's out of the box. Okay. Um, if you have uh, any of the E models or the old 400 models, uh, then you have the ability to add more applications if need be. Uh, the applications come as uh, a license based. So you have to reach out to whoever your um, Emerson uh, account manager is or whatever and get a quote to mm -hmm. add additional licenses. To do that, you need the uh, the MAC address. All right. But yeah, you can add So is, is, is there still a, a license like Matrix or a uh, like Matrix like the E2 had like that? shows uh what they all have like a like a e is you know has like two condensers yep. or whatever yep yeah, she, yeah exactly it was the matrix the current matrix shows um site supervisor as well as um the e3 and sh yeah it does exactly at the cx bx rx um it shows x amount of uh, suction groups uh, condenser applications it shows all that stuff okay. so if you plan on having something large plan to have um, one of the E models, so you can always have the luxury to add more applications to it. Uh, but yeah, in that case, um, I'm just going to do a quick little navigation of the, the icons at the top. Uh, you guys can see the screen all good? Yeah. All right, so we got the cog. This brings up our, our main menu. Um, layout manager, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, General system properties, nothing too crazy here. We're going to get into this. Um, IONET, again, that's a common network protocol that we've accustomed to with the E2s. Um, so in this case, I have my multiflex board tied into uh, COM port 4, a baud rate of 9600. I'll just leave that as it is. Uh, network settings, these are just some IP address configuration. If you get you know, remote access or if you want to connect to your laptop directly into the Ethernet port or one of three Ethernet ports of the E3. Um, 
you, that's how you configure it through here. You can initially configure this on a brand new E3 whenever right on the, the local display. Uh, system values, nothing crazy here, just um, time delays, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, name the unit, rather, unit number, and all that stuff. Uh, advanced gets into a little, a few more details, uh, but we'll jump in, jump in too much on that. Um, if homepage brings me to the initial tile screen, um, every category will have a drop down menu on the left hand side. If you would want to add components, uh, we're going to do the control inventory, which is this little cube thing. Uh, let's say I'm going to add some boards first. Drop down menu. What do you want to add? Uh, let's pick a 16AI. Well, it's not for now. In this case, uh, the type of board it is to the next column over is going to be physical 16AI. Its protocol is IONET. Uh, the, pro the port ID that we have is IONET1, which uh, a couple screens ago we saw was what was configured to COM port 4. And address 1 is what it is by the, to start off with. We're just going to hit the check mark on the right side. Uh, it's already online, popped up pretty fast. I'm just going to do the same process for an 8RO just to kind of get it in there. Same idea, IONET-01, check mark. I got a 4AO. Yeah, that's kind of it for adding boards. It's kind of, I like to think it's relatively easy to do. Um, if you want to you know, add more boards or go and follow a certain naming format, you can duplicate the boards. Uh, I'll just show an example. In this case, I, it's two little kind of pages that are overlapping each other is what the icon is. Click that, and then it's going to tell you how many, uh, or it's going to ask rather, how many duplicates do you want in this example? I'll just, I'll just choose two and duplicate it. I don't actually have these two boards connected to this E3, so it's it won't, it won't come up online, but just to give you an idea on how to quickly duplicate it. And that's um, that's the one you have behind you, correct? That's the one that you're connecting to. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. I have it in um, a little training case that I made up of the board that's under it. Uh, in this case, if you made an error, if you made too many boards, kind of right where it says online offline status, there's a little check marks. So you can give it a tick and move on to the top right. You can delete the boards. Delete it. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Just so you don't accidentally delete stuff. Um, let's jump into, uh, let's do uh, enhanced section. I guess uh, I'll quickly scroll through this. Um, just most of the applications out of the, well, most of these are out of the box. I've added a few to my own here. Uh, circuits, case control circuits, uh, CO2 suction group condensers, uh, kind of core. Um, okay, what was the control? The controlling thing? Oh, that's the the breakers, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's. Um, oh, that's a custom program that comes in the E3 now. I I haven't used it yet. I it's um we can uh, we can open it up. We can load one up after and kind of kind of go through what it is. Yes. Myself, I have yet to use one myself. Sorry, I just I I forgot I forgot what it was for a second. I was like I you were going through them. Sorry, keep going. Oh no worries. Yeah, it, by all means, if if you want to kind of cut me off and ask something or throw your two cents in, but by all means, just have at her. Um, enhanced suction. It's yeah, leak detection. For whatever reason, out of the box, we have the multiflex condensing unit boards and ESRs are under refrigeration by default instead of hardware. Um, Okay, yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry I have to ask this. What what the hell is Rack Simulator? Someone asked me the other day, and I've never used that as long as I've, I've been playing with an E2. I never have either. Well, um, <laughs> it, it's, we'll find out later. We'll, we'll find out. What the heck? Yeah, let's try it out. It, it um, literally simulates a rack. Like, I've, I've, I've downloaded one in there. It literally just sits there and changes the suction, the stages, compressors on and off randomly. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it in for now. We'll take a look at it. <laughs> yeah, now I'm curious. Uh, yeah, it, a lot of these applications will be applications that you probably would have seen in an E2. 